G'day guys, and um, welcome back to the channel. And today I'll be reviewing the game between Geelong and the Western Bulldogs at the Cattery. And it was the doggies getting the job done by 25 points in what was a pretty well undermanned cat side, as, as that was well reported, uh, and probably got the result that uh, we ultimately expected. It definitely took them a while to get to that stage and took a final quarter bit of heroics for the dogs to get over the line, but uh, nonetheless, they, yeah, they were a little bit too strong in the end. And yeah, clearly when you have um, a good chunk of your team, about half your team out, uh, getting prepared for season 2024, playing the kids, uh, that's about what you, what you would expect to see. So yeah, I expected full well, and I'm sure most of the, Footy fans out there were probably expecting the dogs to win, yeah, pretty comfortably. And um, yeah, whilst it was kind of uh, interesting at times, we were, yeah, definitely putting our best foot forward. Um, yeah, we we simply ran out of gas in the last quarter, or didn't put in as much effort as we did the other three quarters. Um, doggies also had finals to play for, and uh, that is no longer at uh, this moment of the video. But um, yeah, with the, with the Giants getting the job done. So yeah, I've I've had a pretty busy weekend, and so I'm doing a pretty late review here uh, for the cats. Didn't get around to it obviously last night, and plenty on today. But doggies, yeah, they they were too strong in the end, um, and you know, got, I suppose before the Giants making it to the finals, I didn't think they were that impressive. Uh, the dogs compared to a half fair fell side uh, on at the Cats home deck so I mean credit to the dogs uh, they get their first win at the Cattery in 20 years which is you know uh, it's been obviously a long time since yeah Geelong have been that ordinary uh, but again yeah a team out there that yeah was just uh, had different uh, measures and objectives and motivation obviously playing uh, some young guys and seeing what we've got on the list and yeah resting up some of the older guys getting ready for next year but yeah, doggies were yeah pretty solid um, throughout. Took their chances, uh, had lots of good looks, uh, and again, yeah, made us pay full price in the last quarter. And yeah, I mean they're pretty lucky to sort of get away with the result. Really, I feel like there was some shots where we were just playing with lots and lots of freedom, and yeah, probably missed some really easy shots ourselves. Uh, the game could have been over at half time almost, or you know, nearly beyond doubt, we we should have been a lot further up than what we were. Uh, even early on, we, we dominated the first quarter, um, and the first half really, and, and we only had a 15-point margin to show for it. But I was surprised that we were uh, on the front foot. I thought it was going to be the dogs would just uh, hold us at arm's length for most of the game. But, yeah, it was the other way around, and we were able to, yeah, somehow be in front at three-quarter time. And, and not, yeah, the dogs clearly got it done in the last. But I was impressed with uh, the pressure, um, you know, some good performances by the some of the younger guys for the cats as well there's there's going to be some yeah futures hopefully nice and bright we'll we'll see how that all pans out i liked our pressure and our, our endeavor early we were able to move the ball really well from half back again uh yeah gave our forwards some pretty good looks won some yeah pretty decent contests inside 50 and yeah clearly we had uh our share of shots we had the same amount of scoring shots it just happened to be that uh, the dogs get yeah, kicked slightly straighter than than what we did and when we were dominant we just didn't get enough on the board like we probably should have had 12 13 goals uh, on the board there with our work in the first half and you know you're staring down the barrel of a five six goal margin at half time and then it looks a little bit yeah trickier to sort of get back into it but yeah conceding 10 goals after half time we just kicked four our second half this year have definitely been challenging and you know we've struggled at times uh, that, that has to be said but yeah the season as a whole it's been pretty frustrating and hasn't really strung together at all it probably a couple of games where there's been some four quarter performances I'll, I'll probably talk about, about that a bit more later on but yeah just never really got going for us and whilst we played some good footy throughout this game it was kind of emblematic of our season really just good in patches but not good enough for long enough and yeah that was exemplified once again uh, clearly yeah the dogs um they, they found a way sort of yeah again in that last quarter to they put the foot down and yeah took a spray from bevo at half time or i'd imagine to get a response and and then yeah final quarter we put the cue in the rack a little bit um 
But yeah, like our ability to defend the ball, especially the transition and our contest work early was good. And that's, you know, when you're good in the contest, you, you get it on the scoreboard, generally speaking. Uh, then half time sort of hit and the dogs, yeah, they, they went to town in the contest and just our inability to sort of get back and help support the defence. Uh, isolating defenders one on one, which you know, our defending one on one hasn't been great all year, but also the way in which we've allowed that to happen is just yeah. I, the one thing I'm pretty gobsmacked about is the whole season we haven't been able to even stop or mitigate ball movement from one end to the other, uh, whether that's you know from the midfield or our forward line. We've just not been able to defend it the whole season. We saw West Coast in gather round where, you know, they kicked ten goals after half time or whatever it was and they beat us in the second half after yeah, we we kicked nine goals in the second quarter. So yeah, we put the cue in the rack there and I think we mentally switched off, lost a lot of confidence and yeah, it was a bit, bit of a bridge too far in the end. But yeah, that I mean, if we're going to go, go anywhere, uh, we have to fix that. Without the footy, we're probably in the bottom four without the footy, right up there with, you know, North Melbourne and, and West Coast and, you know, these sort of teams. Once we don't have the ball, we we just can't seem to grab it off the opposition. And last year, that was our, our bread and butter in 2022, being able to, yeah, turn it back over. But, yeah, the doggies were too good in the end and kind of went as expected. The disposals... Doggy's got the job done, plus 14. Inside 50, so had some more supply in there, 54 to 50 uh, their way. And yeah, efficiency inside 50. We were pretty efficient, looked dangerous when we did get it down there. Doggy's slightly less efficient. That is quite a crazy uh, stat, really, all, all considering. And then, yeah, free kicks, 13 to 14. Doesn't really tell the tale, though. Uh, it's always the ones that you don't get, and that's more often than not a significant amount. And we have been absolutely robbed at home this year, or probably most of the year, really. Uh, but especially at home, I could literally get a compilation of objective kick, free kicks that weren't paid or deliberately not paid. Every 50-50 free kick, and this wasn't the reason we lost the game. But yeah, it's just a, a frustrating piece for most of the season as well. Like When we haven't been playing well, you need something to go right for you. And when the, that goes out of favour as well, it uh, just leaves a sour taste in the mouth. Uh, that, yeah, I'm still not seeing objective umpiring and they're picking and choosing their battles and also picking and choosing to pay the 50-50 free kicks to the opposition every time and then every time is a 50-50 for us we can just never, ever, ever, ever get it. <laughs> uh, ever one more time. But anyway, yeah, the AFL, more umpires than ever, more mistakes than ever in my opinion and it's not just a long problem. I'm just uh, venting and my frustration on it. It's It's been pretty poor all year across a, a lot of teams and yeah, I mean, they're a basket case for an organisation, so they still can't figure out basic free kicks. But, um, yeah, if they had some competent people, that'd be great. Ask for competency. Most <laughs> most places in the world can't seem to get it in the uh, AFL, that's for sure. Uh, the hit-outs, plus five for the Cats. They got the job done there. Uh, clearances, yeah, doggies definitely lifted as the game wore on and we we're, were too strong. In the end there, plus four in the clearances, sending clearances were pretty even and we were going well in the clearances nice and early on in the piece uh, from the stoppages, so the dogs uh, did well there. The contested ball battle was a good one, um, minus seven in the end for the Cats and on the outside, plus seven as well for the dogs. Turnovers, somehow the dogs had more turnovers. I don't know how, but maybe uh, we probably didn't give the ball back to them so much. We just, yeah, we just lost it in the contest uh, yeah, as time went. We were decent on the mark in front, 107 to 86. Uh, good on the mark inside 50. But yeah, the doggies, we've never let so many marks inside 50 than, than it has this season. It's been a bit of a debacle there, down back. Not just the back line's fault, but what happens between the ball getting to the back line is, is probably the big part that uh, concerns me. I think this is a positive um, with all the kids that we did have at home uh, up for majority of the game really probably for yeah, good almost uh, most of it uh, tackles were good I liked uh, the endeavor and effort I think we had 12 in inside 50 tackles in the first quarter so hello where's that been <laughs> uh, where's that been all year uh, one percenters doggies were more desperate 
All right, let's have a look at the votes. Get uh, Geelong first and foremost. I'll go as Tom Stewart for the free votes. He had the 29, had 14 marks, 500 metres gained. I thought, yeah, he was brilliant down back and, you know, we had pretty high standards for him, high expectations. But, yeah, I thought he stood up really well and, yeah, it still shocks me that teams don't put more time and effort into him. Um, the doggies said yeah, him run, run free, really. And, yeah, he disrupted a lot of what the dogs were trying to do and sort of kept us at arm's length from them throughout the game. So I like the way he went about it. Is he in his final match? Might have got a career high there. I'd have to check that. But uh, he kicked one, what, the first goal, actually, of the game. Crowd went nuts. Uh, he had 36, 11 marks, five tackles, almost gained a kilometre. Couple of clearances as well. He played, played in the guts, which was quite fun towards the end. But, yeah, statistically played a really good game, really good link and drive from half back where he was hanging out a lot of the game and yeah some some good theatrics with paddy um towards the end of the match as well three quarter time which is good fun and the one vote for tommy atkins just uh absolutely has a red hot crack every week one goal 19 disposals had the eight tackles um, so he was yeah monstrous in there and also had the five clearances so great play from Axe, and just he just gets to every contest first, and he's always always in it. So whilst the numbers don't read incredibly, just when you watch him at the game, he's uh, he's unmissable. Parfit uh, must have been watching the reviews, or I don't know if his career's on the line. I don't know what the go is, but uh, yeah, played like he did against the Bombers round one, twenty twenty two, where he thought, "Hello, he's taking the next step." Uh, played the full or well, most of the game. Ended up with 26, had nine tackles, eight clearances, a couple of goal assists as well. So, yeah, probably one of his best games for a while. And, yeah, I don't know where he stands, but he played well last night. He's played probably five or six bad ones. Uh, probably played a few games as sub, which is kind of tough to get rolling, especially as a slow midfielder. But like the way he went about it. Uh, Paddy had a goal. He had the 18 touches. Four marks, nine tackles. He was heavily involved. Five clearances, a couple of goal assists as well. Uh, he was yeah dynamic and really good for us again. Uh, very nice goal from the pocket too. Men of goal played his final game. He had the 27 touches, six marks, three tackles, three clearances. Got involved uh, in the stoppages there. A little bit slow at times and turned the ball over a little bit, but yeah, he did get the ball uh, quite nicely and yeah, send him. Uh, a nice farewell for Menegol in his final match. Holmes, he got 22, nine marks, a couple of clearances. He definitely goes in and out of games. He, he's kind of around for 10, 15 minutes, and he goes missing for 25 minutes. So maybe he goes off a bit. He was on the ground for a fair bit. So, yeah, he does go in and out of the games, that's for sure. That's what I've noticed. But, again, he'll be better for the run. Uh, Bose had a fair bit of the ball, a lot of handballs, 25 disposals in the end, and, you know, played his role nicely. Oli Dempsey might be his first goal. No, he's definitely kicked one against North uh, in 2022. But, yeah, he did end up with a goal, 15 touches, uh, eight tackles as well. So, got got uh, involved there on the physicality. Could go in a little bit harder. I know he's not, uh, not the biggest frame of all time, but, yeah, hopefully he gets confidence up and cracks into those contests a little bit more as he goes. Uh, Zach Guthrie's had a really good year. He had, he had the 17 disposal, six marks. Uh, very solid down back and, yeah, does his job really well each and every week. O'Connor had the 20 touches, also the five marks. Pretty solid contributor each week. Myers kicked a goal, had the 19 and also had, yeah, a few marks in there. I swear he had a goal assist as well. I wonder if they missed that, but could be wrong. Uh, pretty good season from Grind overall. I'm sure he'll be in the top three in the best and fairest with the way he's going about this year. Ollie Henry, uh, again, doesn't get a lot of the ball, but maximum damage when he does get it. Three goals, two on the night. And, yeah, one of the main main men up forward. Also handed one off. So four goals directly from him. And then Tyson Stengel had a decent game uh, under his cap. Kicked a couple. Also had the 12 touches. And... Yeah, a couple of clearances as well, goal assists. So, yeah, he was industrious up forward. Reese had 13, played predominantly up forward. Also pinch hit in the ruck to give Conway a bit of a rest. And, yeah, solid game from Reese. Had a goal assist. De Koning, don't know what's happened to him. He always gets 15 to 17 touches. Um, he took a few marks in there. But, yeah, he's just lost so much confidence. And 
yeah, just not taking those marks, not not disrupting those contests that he just always did last year. So, yeah, I think it's just been one of those seasons where he's just been knocked around a fair bit with injury and just lack of continuity and lack of confidence. Hopefully better 2024, but he probably played out of his skin in 2022, so maybe it's leveled out a little bit. Buse had the 15, a little bit of run and dash from Jed, and it went all right. Cole Jasny... Uh, yeah, I think he, yeah, he just did what he did. He had 11, a few marks. I think he got concussed. Somehow got a goal assist. Went to banana, missed it. But yeah, pretty uh, average game from Kola. <laughs> had some interesting moments. Laced out, out Paddy though, which was nice. Uh, Conway's first game, very exciting. Didn't get a lot of the ball, but he he touched the ball a lot. Uh, 24 hitouts. Had the six touches, a couple of clearances in there as well. Pretty steady around the ground, and uh, he has to be our number one ruck next year. Just have to put time into him. Very exciting for the future, so let's hope he can get his body right for 2024. Shannon Neal kicked a goal. Horses had the eight touches and handed one over as well. Finally got his first goal. I know that's been on his mind. He's had some shots and hasn't quite been able to nail them, but he got, got it all fixed up this time, which was great. Never it was he was okay. Like he he has his moments. His best games make you go, wow, this guy's gonna be a superstar. He's he's not so good games are pretty poor, but again, he's very young. Can't uh, can't be too harsh on him. I think at this stage, but yeah, like he he struggled a little bit just with yeah, like letting his man on the wing sort of yeah run pretty freely and not too defensively minded there at times, and didn't really impact all the contests he would have liked. Although he'll be a he'll be a prospect if we can uh, get him right, so we'll see what Mitch can do in twenty twenty four when hopefully with a bit more game time under the belt. Mullen was alright, gets tackled a lot, uh, but he stands up in him, keeps his feet. He'll be good. Ten touches for him. Uh, Closey had uh, five touches. He was pretty quiet, but again, he only had a quarter of the the match. Uh, popped on at three quarter time, but yeah, got involved, had a kick, a few handballs as well. So. Yeah, good to see the kids just have a crack and go from there, really. Uh, so in terms of the ladder, the live ladder, it is live, thank you. Uh, this is where we ended up. So finished 12th for the season. Uh, we could have finished 13th if the Tigers got the job done today, but it wasn't to be. The Dogs subsequently got knocked out because the Giants uh, defeated the Blues in, yeah, what was a pretty intriguing battle of the Wills. And the, yeah, the Giants wanted it and they got it. So, yeah, the Doggies were in momentarily uh, when the game ended, but obviously they needed Carlton to do the other end of the bargain and no Crips and they didn't quite uh, play as well as they would have liked. The Giants uh, had everything to play for. The season was on the line. But, yeah, I mean, with how the Bombers have finished up, you kind of go, geez, the Bombers finished higher than us. Uh, you know, playing North Melbourne and West Coast twice uh, definitely helps. So, I mean, that's that's two more wins almost automatically, although West Coast and North gave them an almighty scare late in the season when they were falling over. Uh, but, yeah, that's that's how it goes sometimes. And, yeah, we'll finish 12, so we'll probably get pick seven or eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, pick seven, something like that. I'm not too sure how the draft really works. But, yeah, I mean, in terms of backing up a premiership defence, it's pretty, yeah, pretty poor, but also had a lot of circumstances go against us and... Yeah, been finals fatigue, really. Like, uh, been in September for a long time, probably 15 of the last 17 years, I think, maybe something like that. So, yeah, like lots and lots of September action and almost uh, automatically in every year. But, yeah, not to be this season and hopefully, yeah, mini rejuvenation over the off season, get some handy plays in the trade period with, without too much uh, in the bank. And, you know, get some players right. Now, senior guys in full health. Cam Guthrie will be like a new recruit next year. Hopefully, he gets his body right. Uh, I suppose, yeah, you take... It's all good and well, so it retires, but then you've got Guthrie out as well, and then Daniel Phil banged up. That's your three starting midfielders basically not really out there at all. And then Blitzarves and Atkins having to play their roles. Paddy Selwood, when he was playing, and then also Guthrie. So it just, just left to too few, but... There's some positives out of that with Bruin getting some experience and other players getting some exposure in the guts. And, yeah, quite clearly we were very thin in the midfield, especially when you take out Guthrie and a lot of reliance on Danielfield at times. So, 
Yeah, that, that's how it goes. I mean, every team relies on their best players. That's no, that's no secret. You need your best players playing well to win every week because it's so, such a tight and competitive competition. Uh, but yeah, I mean, closing thoughts on the season. Yeah, I mean, winning the Premiership definitely tempers your expectations on uh, games of footy and how you feel about winning and losing. And, you know, the losses don't feel as bad, which is, you know, you're kind of like, yeah, well, we just did just got everything right last year and they're so hard to win and when you do win them like you celebrate them and yeah you're just so appreciative of of getting it done so and yeah i would have probably said you know in 2022 going cool we can finish bottom the next few years as long as we we win it so yeah you can't uh, have the cake and eat it too but i also yeah acutely aware that the competition's never been so even and i've been waiting for this for about four or five years for other teams just to be better than geelong and geelong you know, declining a little bit, it's taken a while. But I still think if everything goes right for us next year and we get some good talent off field, we've been, everyone just keeps thinking the year is over, but we've been doing this for 17 years where we've had to, you know, retire, basically retire players, rebuilding Cognito almost. Uh, I think Scotty outlined it as a um, very stealthy rebuild where we've got young talent and we've always had some older guys to be able to, facilitate and encourage that young talent and again if we're able to get some you know even a bailey smith or a darcy parish or some guy that's good in the in the source and you know some decent run off the half back line a good small defender some more support in there for you know depth and good health for cameron these guys for a full season we saw it didn't take a much you know a couple a couple of wins here and there and you know players not at their best and a season where we never really got going we got five wins in a row uh, in that sort of after that first lot of three losses and yeah scotty's only ever lost three games in a row once before this year and he's done it three times this year which is quite funny but uh that, that's how it goes and yeah like good geelong teams generally don't do that uh might be some of the times but i still think we could be top six if a, everything went perfectly for us next year but yeah, off season will tell a lot, and and it'll sort of uh, give us a good guidepost as to where we're at. But yeah, disappointing like season overall. If you look in isolation, uh, it is what it is. Yeah, the, we got some young talent blooded, and got some pretty good games into some players that that will benefit us long term. And that's that's kind of yeah. You have to do little mini resets here and there. I don't know if this means the end. Of Geelong's era, we'll probably know some stage throughout next year whether it's cool. It's going to be a few years before we get back into finals and be contending for for finals again. It could also be five or ten years if if the belly fully drops out. You know, Hawkins, Danielfield, and Cameron in the side definitely keeping us really relevant uh, up that part of the ladder. But we'll yeah, we'll see how it all pans out. Anyway, but just main focus now is trade period, rest and recovery. And hope for a better 2024. That's what we do. So that's it. That's all for season 2023 for the Cats. Uh, no finals this year. Pretty rare saying that. Second time uh, been doing these reviews since 2014 where it hasn't been the case. And second time for Scotty missing finals. But yeah, these things happen. Uh, you can't always be up the top. And it makes you appreciate when you are in the finals uh, even more so and just realize how hard it actually is to to just not only get there but be competitive in finals and we went all the way last year which was uh, amazing and a, t a bit of a 10-year sort of crack at winning the flag and thank goodness we got it last year that's all also but uh yeah bid you farewell in terms of the cats reviews for 2023 uh we'll see how i'm dragging throughout the summer if we do a little bit of a post-mortem and go from there but uh yeah, I think for now I'll uh, keep going with the tips videos for the finals and yeah, have a, have a bit of a break and yeah, it's been a been a long year <laughs> and not even uh, not even in finals and it's been a long year with that extra week. So anyway, uh, Cats fans, thanks for your loyalty, sticking around, watching the reviews each and every week. Subscribe if you haven't already so you can keep up to date with who I'm picking throughout the finals and all that good stuff. And obviously, uh, yeah, I'll keep keep the reviews. Uh, coming through in 2024 as well and, and hopefully we can bounce back and yeah bigger and better in 2024 and uh, yeah get a bit further along in the ladder and see what we can do from there guys really appreciate it thanks for tuning in i'll catch you all next time